In this episode, we travel to a mine outside of Nova Scotia, visiting a phenomenal site found in the province of Newfoundland. To be more specific, we're heading to very near to St. John's, the capital city of Newfoundland, to an island found in Conception Bay called Bell Island. Up to about 60 or 70 years ago, Bell Island was the home to extensive, and I mean extensive, iron mining. So extensive, in fact, that the mining that goes out under Conception Bay, the submarine mines, are the largest undersea workings in the world. Now, the reason Bell Island was so appealing to us to make the trip to do this explore was not just the fact that this mine was so massively large, but the remaining abandoned workings that were still above water were so extensive here that it was well worth the trip. We were looking at potential days of exploration. So as far as we know right now, these Bell Island episodes that we will be putting up here on our channel will be the first and only deep dive and thorough explorations of these abandoned mine workings found on YouTube to date. Lastly, I would say all you abandoned mine aficionados that watch all the different channels from around the world, this is probably one of the most unique mines in the world. I don't think there's anything I've seen in any of the abandoned mine channels anywhere here on YouTube, no matter from where. There's nothing like Bell Island, as you will see. Just the sheer uniqueness of how the cliffs around the island feature the openings and how they break out into the open ocean water is just stunning and unique. We were absolutely stunned, that's for sure, and I don't think anyone who hasn't been to this place has seen an abandoned mine setting like this one. Now before we get into the actual footage and exploration on the ground, it's very important that for this episode and others that we go through a primer, per se, of the Bell Island backstory. This is a must so you can have clarity into where we're going and how everything connects together, not only with the on-land workings that are underground, but also the very extensive flooded workings that still exist out under Conception Bay. Now at this point we should probably acknowledge that there is indeed a Miner's Museum and Underground Mine Tour on Bell Island, and we don't want to confuse this episode with any of that because the workings we're going to be visiting are not open to the public, or have anything to do with the Miner's Museum and the Mine Tour provided on Bell Island. It also has nothing to do with the old Fisherman's Tunnel, which a lot of tourists believe is an old abandoned mine that goes through a cliff, which you see photographed very often on TripAdvisor and other travel sites. That's not even a mine, folks. So let's just take a moment and get into the Bell Island history and backstory. Just to give you an idea of the size of the island, it's approximately 10 kilometers long and three and a half kilometers wide. That's six miles by two and a half miles. It sits kind of like a sentinel or a fortress in Conception Bay with very high cliffs almost all the way around, ranging anywhere from 100 to 200 feet high. There's just a couple rare areas where the top of the island gently slopes down to the water side. The population out there today is around 3,500 people and was as high as around 13,000 during the mining boom days. Now the boom of iron mining that happened on Bell Island is of no doubt because of the fact that the hematite, or the iron ore as it's casually called, was of such high grade, approximately 50 to 51% pure and immense, found in bands throughout the island and out under Conception Bay that were anywhere from 10 feet to 25 feet thick, that the return on investment for mining this ore was just so impressive and the resource so extensive that it was more than obvious that iron mining at this scale could and did take place there. Now this is the part you need to know about the mining itself to understand everything in this episode and others. They first started into the iron ore at the surface and mining began around 1890. The surface mining was very simple mining done by pitting and shafting from the surface and getting what was close and easy to grab by literally digging down. Those areas of surface mining can still be found today. After they exhausted the surface mining efforts, they started to head underground and started the first underground mines on Bell Island. This was by about year 1900. There were two underground operations in the beginning. The first was at the far end tip of the island, called the Number One Mine. And this was chasing bands of iron ore that started at the cliff side that was above the sea level and headed into the island body itself and under the town. The second area was sort of at the midpoint edge of the island, at an area called Grebe's Nest, a coastal inlet. This was called the Number 5 Mine, and likewise headed into iron ore bodies that were above sea level, that headed inward into the island and under the fields and streets. By about year 1905-1906, they wanted to start into the submarine iron ore, which was out under Conception Bay and under the beach. So to do this, they started inland, driving slopes on a gentle angle around 10 degrees downward towards the beach, under the beach, and out under Conception Bay. 
Once they started reaching the ore bodies as intended, they began the room and pillar mining to the sides and spreading out as far as they needed to go. The submarine or underwater iron mining operations off Bell Island were of course the most extensive mining operations of all. Those workings out there under Conception Bay are approximately four by six kilometers. Again, the largest submarine mine workings of any mine found anywhere in the world. There were several slopes that went down to the underground workings. Those were known as mines number two, number three, number four, and number six. So just to recap, the number one and the number five mine were the underground mines found in the land of the island itself above sea level. By 1965, when all of the mining ceased, that is when the number two, three, four, and six mines were closed. The slopes were left alone, but they were sealed off at the surface. The number two mine is where the museum and the public mine tour is found today. Keep in mind, after 1965, when all the pumps went silent, groundwater slowly filled all the underwater mines out under Conception Bay, all the way back up to approximately sea level or groundwater level. The number one and the number five mines, which were underground mines above sea level, have no flooding whatsoever. Just to give you an idea of depth, the underwater or submarine workings of the mines came within minimum 200 feet of the sea floor under Conception Bay, while the deepest points were around 1,600 feet, completely sealed off from the seawater above. The water that trickled in and filled and flooded the undersea workings was completely fresh groundwater, not seawater. And just to give you an idea of scale, in the end, 1965-1966, at closure of the mines, 78 million tons of iron ore had been extracted from the Bell Island mine system. So that's it. That should give you enough background for now so you'll know exactly what we're dealing with when we go into the explorations. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.